At first glance, you may not think there's that many similarities at all between the Aptera and the Cybertruck. One is sharp and edgy, right? And one is all curvy. One's got four wheels and one's got three wheels, but there actually are quite a few more similarities than meets the eye. And it comes more down to design philosophy and ideology, besides just the literal, which is left at both the Aptera and the Cybertruck have a single windshield wiper and are mainly controlled on a center display and rely on cameras to replace their rearview mirrors. That's the literal similarities between the two, but on a more design level, they lean into this concept of knowing what an item is trying to be and leaning into that. When Elon and Franz set out to design Tesla's first all-electric pickup truck, they knew that they wanted to do something different because pickup trucks had fundamentally looked the same way for decades upon decades, and Tesla knew that because they're an all-electric company, there's going to be some pushback anyway. You're going to be controversial to a lot of the public by just not really relying on gasoline. So they fell back on, well, if we're going to go out there and do something different, if we're going to make a statement, then let's lean into exactly what a pickup truck is supposed to be. A truck is supposed to be stronger. It's supposed to be tougher. It's supposed to be more capable. So they reflected that ideology of what a truck is meant to be to the exterior design with a very, very bold and unique design change that has really never been seen on any other vehicle before. No one's seen something so eye-catching, so sharp and so angular. And I think what makes it so special and separates it from all other pickup truck designs out there is the fact that they know not everybody is going to like it. They knew from the beginning it's divisive. And if you want to see just how head-turning and divisive it is, I'd encourage you to watch the latest road trip video from Dirty Tesla where he took the Cybertruck across the East Coast and captured so many different people's opinions and perspectives of seeing the Cybertruck in person. And of course, most people that are willing to come up to to you and say their opinion on it are very into it but it's very satisfying to see so many people react to it and so many people verbally willing to come up to a stranger and say hey I've never seen one before or what the heck is that thing who makes that vehicle a lot of people who didn't even know it was an electric truck that were just interested in the design and some people even admitting they're not big fans of electric vehicles but they are a fan of the cyber truck and it's these kinds of bold design statements that don't come around every single day and I think very similarly and I can express from my own personal experience, the Aptera captures a very similar type of reaction. Even though, no, the Aptera is not really a pickup truck, even though it's got a lot of space in the back and it's kind of a big hatch opening. It's definitely not a pickup truck. It's hard to put it in a box. It's not really a sedan. It's not an SUV, but it's also not a motorcycle either. It's kind of a brand new form factor. Very few other vehicles on the road like it. Even other three-wheelers have very little in common with the enclosed cabin space, the solar charging, the range that the Aptera has. Most other three-wheelers have very lousy range. But what the Aptera does is question the status quo when it comes to vehicle design. And like the Cybertruck had this emphasis on what are we trying to make? What does a truck really stand for? Let's lean into that with this more durable, rugged exterior. Let's not put paint on there. Let's make it bulletproof and let's make it stand out as a truck that is trying to showcase how much it welcomes the ruggedness. It welcomes the mud, the dirt, the scratches and stuff. It kind of wears as a badge of honor to encompass what pickup trucks stand for. In the same way, Aptera had that emphasis on what is efficiency? How do we make a vehicle that puts efficiency first? Because there's so many people out there that like electric vehicles or bigger than that, they just want a good product that works reliably. I can't tell you how many dinner tables I've sat at and heard about people complaining about their engines, issues with the transmission, the head gaskets, the oil, so many issues with our current day vehicles and electric vehicles help solve some of those, but they introduce new ones when it comes to the range, the home charging, the affordability, all of these things are concerns and questionable when it comes to electric vehicles that Aptera is trying to solve from a ground up approach of what do people really use their vehicles for. And I think it's the first time that a company has actually thought about the fact that the automobile with its four wheel and boxy door approach has really carried over a lot of design characteristics from the stagecoach days. The same old days where we had horses and oxen pulling our little cabs around with four wheels every Everywhere, and Aptera realized that, hey, this kind of boxy four-wheel design approach is really not the most energy efficient. And the more efficient you make the vehicle, the smaller the battery pack you can use, the more solar charging, so self-powered starts to make sense. Suddenly these problems of how much range can you get out of it, or how do I charge it from home if I don't have a garage, or don't have control over the power outlets where I park my car, all of these options start to dissolve away. And the Aptera design is, from the ground up, not worried about exactly what 
of people think of it. They know that there's going to be a lot of divisiveness around it. And that's why, similar to the Cybertruck, it captures a similar amount of attention to people, especially in person, because there is a reaction to have to the exterior design. There is a bit of this, okay, I've seen it online, I've seen pictures of it, I've seen videos of it, but now seeing it in person, it starts to click and I start to like it a lot more. And there's a lot of people in my personal life, like my wife and my uncle, that were skeptical of it when I showed them pictures of it. And they went, yeah, I don't know about that. That seems a little weird. And then thankfully, Aptera was welcoming enough to let me bring some of my family to the factory and show it to them. And then it all started clicking. They actually were very impressed by the comfortness of being inside it. They loved the acceleration. They loved how car-like it felt despite being a three-wheeler. They saw the cargo capacity. They saw how easy it is to get in and out. And once they started experiencing it in person, it started to feel a lot more practical and a lot more logical. And by far, having watched a lot of different YouTubers get to check out the Aptera in person, the number one quote that I keep hearing people bring up, whether they plan on ordering one or not, is this is the way of the future. This is how vehicles are going to be designed long term. Everyone has this sense that's similar to that of what I got the first time I drove a Tesla was, oh my god, this makes so much more sense. This is where we're headed. This is eventually going to be how people experience vehicle design. And I'm not specifically just referring to, you know, a two-seater with three wheels. I'm referring to putting a huge emphasis on aerodynamics and relying more on the giant nuclear reactor in the sky to do all of the work for us when it comes to powering the vehicle. And I know that Aptera has got more vehicle designs up their sleeve in the same way that Tesla does. But I think what's cool about the similarities between the Cybertruck and the Aptera is they're the kind of vehicles that don't need a logo. They don't need branding. The Aptera doesn't have lettering or text on it anywhere that actually says Aptera. In fact, they could probably drop the logos on the vehicle and people would still look at it whenever it passes them on the road and go, what the heck is that thing? Why is it shaped the way it's shaped? Why did they design it that way? And the more questions that get answered, the more you ask about it, the more it starts to click in people's heads. Oh, that's actually really smart. That makes a lot of sense. How can I get a vehicle like that? And I think we're going to have very similar reactions when Aptera hits the road to what we're seeing with the Cybertruck now. It's kind of a once in a decade type design that doesn't come along every single day. You know, when the Model Y and Model 3s came out, if you're a Tesla fan, you know about them and you can spot them, but everyday people don't think much about hatchbacks. And as much as I love Rivian, I hate to say it, but it's going to be the same thing with the R2 and the R3. They're cool looking and they're more futuristic looking, but they kind of look like, you know, slightly different versions of what is already out there, just with more light bars and more displays. They kind of blend into the crowd, and there is a market for that, I will add. I'm not the kind of person who likes drawing a lot of attention to myself on the road or in public. Part of the reason I really like our Model 3 is because there's so many of them where I live that no one really thinks anything of it, but when we get our Aptera, there's definitely gonna be a lot more attention on us, a lot more people coming up to us asking us questions. What the heck is that thing? Why are you driving that? And then the more you tell them about, well, it's basically free to drive this thing up to like 11,000 miles per year. It gets a ton more range than any other electric vehicle and it has a ton of storage space. And despite all of this, it can still be incredibly safe thanks to its carbon fiber passenger safety cell, the side impact protection, the huge rear crumple zone that's much bigger than that of a Model 3, and the very, very large front crumple zone, longer than what you need to achieve for a five-star safety rating. Still has airbags, still has HVAC and all that. You don't need a motorcycle's license to drive it, but still, I'm seeing people with these cyber trucks now that are just introducing its design for the first time to so many people on the road, and you basically have to be free marketing for the company. Everywhere you go, people are going to come up and ask tons of questions about it, and those kinds of designs do not come around every single day. Everything else is mostly going to be a rendition of things that already exist. We've got our Ionic 5s, we got our ID4s, we got our Mach E's and our Model Y's, but you really only got one Aptera for now, and I think the fact that it's going to be so eye-catching and grab so many questions on the road once they start production and start delivering them is part of the reason that Aptera is going to only need a fraction of the marketing or advertising budget that other companies are going to need to get their vehicle out there to get people talking about their product because unlike products like the Fisker Ocean or the Lordstown Endurance, this vehicle does things like no other. It's very separate. It's very unique, not just from its interior design, but more importantly, its exterior design, which is what most people are interacting with when they see it and drive by it on the road. Fisker Ocean is just like, oh, okay, yeah, another electric SUV. That's great. Lordstown was like, okay, we put a light bar on an F-150. Yay. And even if Tesla's 
Ford's next generation vehicle comes out and it turns out to be just another hot hatch, just, you know, a Chevy Bolt with a Tesla logo, that's not going to turn as many heads. Tesla's gonna have to work a lot harder to advertise a vehicle like that and brag about, hey, this one's got steer by wire and 48 volt architecture and that's why it's so much cheaper to build. A lot of people are still gonna be like, oh, okay, cool, but I could also just buy a used Model 3 or a used Model Y for probably close to the same price, if not cheaper. But with the Aptera, you're not gonna find another vehicle that starts under $40,000, doesn't require any gas, and can go 400 miles on a single charge and charge itself from sunlight. Not to mention the brand has a huge emphasis on right to repair, and Aptera is willing to go the CarPlay and Android Auto route, which Tesla and Rivian are not. So it's good for the EV industry as a whole to have options. I'm not trying to say that Aptera is gonna kill off some other category, but there are a lot of two-door vehicles on the road. I see them every day, and a lot of people are willing to go with two doors as commuter vehicles if they're more fun to drive, and trust me, the Aptera is very fun to drive very fast. <laughs> Still has the all-wheel drive, whereas the Tesla next generation vehicle is probably going to be rear-wheel drive. Still has far more range than what Tesla's offerings are going to have, and a lot of people can't charge from home. Aptera is able to get somewhere between 8,000 to 11,000 free miles of solar charging per year. That's going to make a lot of economic sense to a ton of people out there. And like I said in yesterday's video, they don't have to sell hundreds of thousands of people on this idea. They only need 6,000 a year to break even, and they've already got well more than 47 thousand reservations as is. So I have no doubts about the demand for this kind of vehicle existing. It's just about finding the right investors and the right capital to get this vehicle into production, which it sounds like they got options and they're weighing them out right now based on the last interview we had from Aptera Owners Club with the co-CEOs. And I encourage you guys to check that out if you haven't already. Very interesting, very captivating, and so much transparency from Aptera as a brand, more so than any other company I've ever seen willing to talk to small channels like me and and answer any questions you guys can possibly think of. So what other design similarities do you guys see between the Aptera and the Cybertruck? I guess they also both had knacks from the very beginning. Aptera never had the intention of using CCS1 even when their prototypes were first unveiled back in 2020. Neither of them rely on paint and a lot of them use simplified manufacturing methods to get their vehicle into production faster. Both of them are late of course on their promised delivery timelines. There's a lot of similarities here so feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly seriously helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos so thanks again have an excellent rest of your day